How you doing? This is Vaughn Edmead from Average is Failure. And what I've decided to do is that for this first month of the year, what we'll do is focus on four things that I believe are going to be the foundation of any type of achievement that we want to make this year as far as reaching the fullness of our potential, okay? So, you know, um, those four, the four things that I wrote down, I have it here in my notes, is vision, faith and or belief, your why, and being yourself. And I, I didn't really write that in order, but I'm just letting y'all know, right? So the one that I want to deal with for the first week of this year is your why. And I think that that's probably at the, even of the four that I mentioned, those might be foundations for us to achieve whatever it is what we, we would like to achieve. But at the foundation of even those four, the why is the most important one out of all of them, I would, I would say. And so you have, some of you might have heard of like leadership gurus such as Simon Sinek. He wrote a book called Start With Why. You might want to go uh, find that book and check it out. Uh, Eric Thomas also talks about one of the questions that he asked in some of his presentations is, you know, what is your why? Um, you can go on YouTube and find that video. But I want to talk about your why because there are two reasons why. There are more than two reasons, but two of two of the most prominent reasons why uh, most people will fail at something usually will tend to be because they're lacking in competence or they're lacking in motivation. Now, most of you all are probably doing something right now already that addresses like the competence issue, okay? So what I mean by that is if you're in school and you're listening to me, then they're addressing your competence already, right? If you're in medical school, you're learning learning how to be a competent doctor. If you're in law school, you're learning how to be a competent lawyer. You're learning the skills, the tools that you need in order to just do the job, okay? If you are an apprentice of some sort, then you are learning the trade, whether that, you know, it might be something in HVAC or what have you, um, but you're learning how to be competent. But what school is not really designed to teach you is the motivational aspect. Um, the, the, and I, I'll use that term motivation real lightly uh, because I don't, want, I don't want this to just be an, a motivational thing. This is about empowerment, right? So the reason why your why is so important is because your why is the very thing that's going to hold you, the very thing that's going to keep you going, especially when you don't feel like going, all right? So you don't really need motivation when you feel like doing something. You don't need empowerment when you're ready and willing and able to do something. You need these things when like, <laughs> you're having one of those days and you're like, yo, I'm just about to sit in the bed all day, all week, you need those things when you feel like nobody believes in you or you feel like you're just by yourself or what have you. Uh, there's like, like you feel like nothing's going to work out. So some of the things, some, what I don't want you to do is just find a general uh, weak why. Because if your why is weak, then you're never going to have the consistency and the commitment and the longevity that you're, you're seeking for. Does that make sense? What you have to do, what all of these leaders talk about, is having a strong, compelling why. Why is it that you want to accomplish whatever it is that you would like to accomplish this year? Okay? So some of the strong whys that most people will tend to draw to are, for, for me, it's people. I'm a people person. So my why is, who are the folks that I would like to impact? If I don't do what... I'm supposed to do, who, who, who misses out? And we're not necessarily even just talking about miss out in terms of they don't, um, they might fail at something. That's not what I'm talking about, but who might not reach the fullness of their potential if I don't continue working on trying to get better in every area of my life and reach my full potential, so to speak. Does that make sense? So what about future generations after you, right? Can you position yourselves when you think about the people who have been successful in the past, can you position yourself in such a way so that even after you're dead and gone, future generations of your lineage, is, uh, they're still financially stable and not just them, but also the, um, let's say, other people who, who you'd like to impact. Let's, for instance, if you put together some sort of um, institution, then the institution continue to benefit, can, can continue to benefit other people, right? So, so that could be a strong, compelling why. Your family, maybe you want to make your parents proud. 
that can be a strong, compelling why. Um, maybe you've seen, you know, people in poverty, and so you're, you're, or may, or let's change it up. Maybe you can't spend as much time with your family as you would like to, and so maybe the ability to have freedom and to be able to choose when you want to work when you want to go into an office or what have you, maybe that'll be your motivating factor. That'll be the why as far as why you decide to step into entrepreneurship so that even when you're having a bad day, it doesn't look like you, your, your, your business that you're trying to start, your company is gonna, that you're trying to start, it doesn't look like it's going to work out. You still say, you know what? I see I have this thing that allows me to see or, or, or reminds me of why I'm doing this. And so when I'm reminded of why I'm doing it, I remember the importance of it. And so I continue going ahead, going ahead and digging deeper into it. So that's why I think that even when you think about men like Martin Luther King, so you hear the why and, and why he was willing to do the reasoning that he was willing to do all the things that he did. So he says things to the effect of he longs to see a day when black children and white children can come together and playing in harmony. You know what I mean? He, you, you, anybody that you look up to, I'm sorry, not anybody that you look up to really, because some of us might look up to people that <laughs> they ain't got no straw. They, whatever. That's a whole other topic. But what I am trying to say is that you need to find and figure out what will be your why. Some of you, I, I, I know for myself, one of the things that keeps me going have I figured everything out as yet? No, but I'm trying to. Why? Because I don't want to be a slave to a nine to five for the rest of my life. Um, you know, I want to I want to be able to do what I want to do with my time and um, and still know that I'll be able to take care of myself in the future and take care of anybody else who is underneath my influence. I would like to open up eventually opportunities for you, you create opportunities for internships or create opportunities for jobs for other people such as myself. You know, I, I would like to be in a position to help somebody else um, to avoid avoid the, the challenges that I've experienced in my life. I would like to be in a position to maybe pay for a young person to go to school. Um, I, I just want to make, and, and that's my why. My why is simply this. I want to live in such a way that I make other people's lives better, you know, um, that, that that that's one of the strongest draws for me. You know, there are other pulls for me as far. Some for some of you, it might be if if you're a person who is a religious person, your why might simply be that you would like to, you know, in in honor of God, you want to just make sure that everything that God has put within you, that you actually use it. It's called being a good steward, right? So you want to make sure that anything that God has given you, any talent that He's given you, any gift that He's given you. Maybe he's gifted you financially. Uh, maybe he's gifted you, um, you know, in whatever area of your life it is. You want to be a good steward of that thing in honor to him. So by all means, I think that's a strong motivating factor. I know that's a strong motivating factor for me. It might be a strong motivating factor for you. So, um, so yeah, man, that that's uh, that's pretty much it. You know, the legacy that you would like like to leave. The oh, um, I'll leave you guys with this. When you're thinking of your why, I'm so glad I remember this. I was listening to an interview with Mark Cuban today, and one of the things that he was talking about was the fact that he operates in such a way where he pretends that there's somebody that's trying to take everything that he's worked to build, um, you know, everything that's important to him. So, there's somebody out there that's doing their best job to try to strip him and take all of that away from him. And so for some time, sometimes you may not be able to find as many positive whys as you would like to, but even that can be a, a motivating factor sometimes. It's just simply understanding that life itself is out to beat you up. Life itself is out to try to strip you of everything that it is that, that you've built, that you have. Um, and trust me, if you haven't seen it yet, if you live long enough, you will eventually come to that conclusion when you start going through some challenges as you get older. So, so, so one of the things that I know that I plan to implement into my life this year is conducting myself in such a way as if, and life has already tried to do that, but even more so being more conscious of the fact that there's somebody out there, and maybe it might not necessarily be a person, but th just that concept, the idea that 
there's something that's trying to take everything that I want away from me. Everything that I need away from me. And this thing does not care whether or not I live or die. And so I need to operate and conduct myself this year with a certain level of tenacity, knowing that when we talk about becoming successful, when we talk about becoming great, when we talk about maximizing our, the fullness of our potential, what we're talking about is a fight. What we're talk I don't even know how I'm get, getting into all of this. I start, I'm starting with why. Well, I guess this still falls into place, but, but uh, I, I sound like it seems like this is a bit dramatic. But this thing is a fight, y'all. It's a fight. And man, like the odds are not stacked in most of your favor. Not stacked in most of your favor. So understanding that it is a fight, um, I'm daring you all that this year that you would fight with all your might. Uh, you know, whatever it is that your hands find to do, do it with all of your might, understanding and knowing that, um, that, that there is an enemy out there that's trying to take everything away from you. Um, but thank goodness, I believe that, um, that if you're faithful, if you're faithful over the few things that you have, if you're a good steward with the few things, then God will honor that and that he'll provide increase for you um, in due time. So in due season, we will reap if we faint not, man. So my, my, so, okay, so make sure after you watch this video, I just want you to write down the different whys that you have that you, and you can hang it up somewhere if you want to, but write down all of the whys. What, what are the different things? What are the different reasons that you want to be excellent this year? 